good afternoon everyone and welcome to my live interview. Uh, this is number three in the series. Ran into some tech difficulties on Tuesday but we saved that and so today I am super super excited to introduce a lady that I am getting to know quite quickly at the moment and will be spending quite a bit more time with over the next couple of months. So I have the pleasure of introducing Georgina from Georgina Bowden Coaching. Uh, I've heard her call herself George quite a few times uh, over the last few weeks, so I might have to ask her if that's what most people call her. Uh, we are going to be talking about this whole idea of procrastination. Do you procrastinate? That is my question to you. Because I have a feeling that lots of people are really good at procrastinating and sometimes we don't actually even know that we're procrastinating because our procrastination sort of comes out in a bit of a different way. And I've definitely discovered my way of procrastinating <laughs> and I'm happy to share that with you guys. I'm happy to be real about the fact that I, uh, I'm, I'm a great old procrastinator as well. Um, so I um George in now hopefully it's gonna work today please 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 ah yay I'm here <laughs> I just need to turn your volume up a bit one sec oh you're all right that's fine cool look at my giant I'm, hand <laughs> I'm so glad that this worked because the other day when it didn't work it was just it was frustrating anyway welcome thank you for okay. taking the time to be here that's okay. Yeah, it's always a bit of a gamble, isn't it? <laughs> Whether these things are going to let you down or work well. Yeah, and unfortunately, this one's a gamble where there doesn't actually seem to be a rhyme or reason for the ones that work and the ones that don't. Well, not that I've found yet, anyway. <laughs> so, I. <laughs> oh, looks like we've frozen there. Oh. I don't know what's happened there. I I cut myself off. Oh, there you are. That's all I'm right. still it here. Just froze. It just froze for a second. Good. Well, I'm glad it worked. Thank you for being here. Can you just introduce yourself to those people watching who might not know you and your business and what you do? Yes, sure. So I'm Georgina Bowden. Uh, most people call me George. Um, and I am a success catalyst. I specifically work with women running small businesses um, and specifically women who know that they are being their own worst enemies and they're not making the money and seeing the sales that they want because they are afraid, basically. So that as you know, they spend too much time procrastinating. So it's my job to get them out of that procrastination mode and focus on doing the things that really matter. Awesome. Okay. That is a great explanation. I wasn't even going to try and do that for you, <laughs> but I really love that. And I love that. I love that combination of words, success catalyst. It's such a powerful choice of, of like, distress. thank you. I, I started off calling myself um, a mindset coach and confidence coach. And I was like, I don't really want to like, I am a coach but I don't need to start by saying I'm a coach. Let's make it a bit more descriptive. Yeah, I love it. I love it. All right. So like I know for me that my form of procrastination is learning. And for some yeah. people, they'll be like, like how, how, well, how is that procrastination? Well, it's because I don't do the stuff that I actually need to be doing to move my business forward. I just learn a lot of stuff. <laughs> Yeah, so and, you're constantly in that kind of over-prepping mode, yeah, yeah? Yeah, and I'm loving learning all the things and it lights me up and it's amazing, but then I'm not doing what I need to be doing. So I would love for you to share just some tips and tricks that we can be using to try and move through that space and actually do what we need to do. Sure, sure, sure. Well, often, I mean, if we take your, your example um, as a good one, we often get stuck in that kind of over prepping phase because it, it helps us to not do the actual thing. If we're constantly in that place of, I need to know more, I need to be more. I, you know, what if people find out that I'm a complete fraud because I don't know enough, so I should definitely learn something else. 
Um, yeah. And that's, that's okay. If you're filling, if you're really filling a gap of, of knowledge, then that's okay. But don't let it stop you doing the stuff that really matters. So what I, what I like to say to people is, okay, here's an example, okay, of, of me earlier on this year, where, it's that, where the same thing happened. So, you know, my B-Board and business program, you're in my group, so you know all about that. Um, about January this year, I was like, oh, I've got this really good idea for a course. It'd be so good. And I like prepped it all out and I got it all ready. And I was like, what if? So I got stuck between what if nobody buys? Yeah. What if so many people buy that I can't deliver? And I've got stuck between those two like ridiculous things. So what I say to people, and it works really well, and I talked about this um, at the workshop I ran this morning as well, is to get really curious about what it is that is going on for you. So to use my example, I thought, okay, so I'm worried that it's going to be so popular, like really for my first launch, I don't think so. But anyway, that's what I was worried about. I was worried it was going to be so popular that I wouldn't be able to deliver. And so I thought, I asked myself, what do I need to do so that I don't have to worry about that anymore? And the answer was super simple. Just cap it, cap it at 10 people and that will be fine. And then the second thing I thought was, what am I worried about that I'm worried it's not going to fail, that I'm worried that it will fail and no one will sign up? Well, firstly, if no one signs up, no one's going to know. So it doesn't really matter. What is, what is the actual worry there? Why am I worried that no one will sign up? And I thought it's because I know my messaging isn't super strong. What can I do? So all these questions like move me one step forward. It's always about moving yourself one step forward. What can I do then to make sure my messaging is on point? And I was like, right, I need to find myself a messaging coach. So I did a course with her three months. She was really amazing. Gave me so much confidence in what I talk about, who I'm talking about it to. I realized how much I knew that I, this might be useful for you. I realized how much I knew that I kind of just took it for granted that everybody knows this stuff, but everybody doesn't know that stuff. Um, And I was like, right, I'm going to do it. And I did it. And I think I sold um, five spots in the first 24 hours. And then I got two more people on after that. And then a couple of months later, I've relaunched. I'm in the middle of the launch at the moment. And I've got um, four people signed up so far. Three more are interested. So all that fear that I had and the kind of the procrastination about, is it going to be really rubbish or is it going to be so amazing? I'm just not going to be able to deal with it. Was It's been like smoke in the winds now because I was able to deal with it and move past. But it still took me a, a few months to, to, to do that. So even though I know what I'm doing, and I help other people, I still get stuck in that thing myself. Yeah, and I think that feeds that imposter syndrome because when you're stuck in your own stuff, that just feeds that idea of, I don't know enough, I'm not good enough, who am I to be doing this? And that is just this spiral. And the and I agree with you and I love your answer because the only way to get out of that spiral is to just start moving forward, little piece by little piece. Exactly. And it doesn't, like you say, it doesn't have to be that, I know we, we hear all these coaches talking about taking massive action and I'm so not about taking massive action. I'm about taking the next tiny step because I, I'm a firm believer that a lot of tiny steps adds up to massive action. When you look back and you think, oh, this time last year, I was afraid to even go live and now I'm doing like a challenge and everyone's loving it. So yeah. Yeah, definitely. I definitely think That's so true. The other thing is that that fear monkey is much happier with small pieces. So it doesn't tend to kind of sink its teeth in as hard as when you just try and go at it hell for leather. So sometimes that is, you know, it's just part of the process. But there are a lot of people out there telling you that you've got to create this huge thing. And I'm not, I'm not so sure that that, that that is you know that's great for some people but it doesn't have to be done done that way exactly one of the things that put me off um launching my program was that i thought it was gonna be like some crazy amy Amy porterfield style type launch and i had like all my funnels and all my emails and i was like oh my god how do i make it all work together and i was like hold on hold on love hold on like wind it in again 
how about you just send out to your list like five emails, reach out to a few people who you know have wanted to work with you one-on-one -on -one but couldn't afford it and see if this is up their street. Bam, 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 done. <laughs> it's so much yeah. easier when you take out all the pressure. We put so much pressure on ourselves to be perfect and do everything perfectly and we don't need to do that, especially if you have already built up um, you know, relationships with people that you can then reach out to. And like I said in my... Um, visibility challenge on following up with them da, da, da. hey I was thinking about you I've got this new thing what do you think would you be interested yeah and it's really well, I shrug my shoulders like that's it but obviously that's not it <laughs> no no but but it's those fundamental pieces that are sometimes missing you can create this huge launch strategy and people do this with social media they create this huge launch strategy posts lives all these different things that they're doing, even Facebook ads, which is an area that I'm just starting to get into more. And then you go to their post and five people have commented and they haven't replied to anyone. Yes. And I know, it's like, I know. how, why are people going to buy from you? Because if someone thinks, if someone thinks to themselves, well, you couldn't even answer my question or acknowledge my existence in your promotional part of, of what you're doing, what kind of customer service am I going to get when I start working with you? Exactly, exactly. It's so easy to be anonymous on social media. And in fact, we actually need to use it to bring each other closer together, not, you know, not maintain that distance. Um, and um, what was I going to say? So, yes. So, for example, so one of the questions you asked me about my course was, you know, how much one to one support do you get? And something that I really value about it is that you get so much, even though it's a group coaching course, you get so much one to one hand holding and support yeah. when you need it that you have. It's got the impact and obviously you've got the great community as well. You've got, it's got the impact of one-to-one -one coaching, but you don't have to pay one-to-one -one prices. And it's mm -hmm. not a digital course, so you don't get left behind. So I love to have that um, personal touch where people feel special and because they are. Everybody is, everybody's business is different, and I don't want to be a cookie-cutter coach that's like, right, okay, mm -hmm. what you've got to do is build your list, yeah. then do a webinar, then do a... Blah, blah, blah. Uh, that is not the way it is. And, and the way that I see... Um, the way that I see people that I work with on the on the current round of the course is that they're all like pearls on a on a thread and oh. oh we just lost her and I was so into whatever that analogy was going to be so now I'm wondering if it's me that's disappeared me that's caused the disappear or George, that's caused to disappear. No, it looks like I am still live. Let's change some settings. Ah! Yeah, so I am still good. Here we go. Trying again. Oh, I'm crossing my fingers that this is going to re-add. No. Oh, why, 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 why? <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> sorry, I don't even know why I got thrown off the video just then. No, but anyway, me um, either. Sorry. So, the last thing that we saw of you was you saying... They're like pearls on a string, and then it was just all me. Okay, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I see them. I see them all like pearls on a string, right? So they some people are further along the string, and some people are are a bit further back. And my job is to move everybody along that string. It's not to move someone that is, you know, for example, someone that is too frightened to even post on their Facebook page to suddenly get them to doing public speaking, that's not going to work for that person. For, so 
yeah, people are all at different stages in their business, but the one thing they've got in common is not doing the things that they know they should be doing. Yeah, so I really, this is a really interesting thing because I know that you have done, you know, one to one coaching. And at the moment, that has been what I've been doing. I've been working with people one to one. And I love that. And we get great transformations and we build the most amazing relationship. But the one thing I guess that's missing is that community aspect, that support aspect. And that in business, particularly online business, is so important because it can be really lonely. And so it's that is just such a good mix of those two options. And that's why I, we're going to go into launch over the next couple of weeks for something really similar because mm. it's going to give the group aspect but also the personal aspect. It's not just a course that you start and never finish um, that's self-paced and no one answers your questions because, you know, I've yes. got a lot of them. <laughs> I told you, <laughs> education is my procrastination. <laughs> so that <laughs> accountability is just amazing. Definitely, definitely. And, you know, sometimes, like you say, I started doing the one to one. Um, and I love that because you can go deep with the one to one and, and you get really good results. But I also know that a lot of people are intimidated by one to one coaching and mm -hmm. they can't afford it or they, you know, they, they can't see the value of it, let's say. Um, and so I wanted to produce something that was more accessible for people that was easier to kind of sink their teeth into um and still get them results which is yeah what i'm doing yeah. so i love it so Absolutely. much yeah and that's something that, yeah that so, is so good something that i wanted to say because we kind of got off the procrastination um conversation um but i was talking about it this morning is obviously procrastination boils down to being afraid of something um and what i tell people who i work with is that even the work that we do together, even me and I do, and you know, I, I help other people with this stuff. Even me gets floored by fears and procrastination and things like that. Um, and we have this inner critic in our ear telling us how rubbish we are and how embarrassing it's going to be and all that kind of stuff. Um, and even if we do all the work, that inner critic is not going to go away. And it's, it's kind of liberating to realize that you, I'm afraid you're basically stuck with it. Um, but the thing is, we're not trying to banish it or fight it. We need to be aware of the inner critic. And it's more like walking away from the conversation rather than, you know, telling them that you never want to speak to them again. Because ultimately, our, our inner critic, we think of having, you know, we've got our brain, We've got our, maybe our inner critic on one shoulder and our inner sage or our inner mentor or whatever on the other shoulder. Essentially, they're trying to keep us safe. So they are, they think, they think like it's a real person. They think they're acting in the best interests of us, but it comes from that kind of primeval fear of cave lion, you know, that typical example that you're going to be eaten by a cave lion. So is it fight, flight or, or, or freeze? Our lovely brain thinks that going live on Facebook or doing public speaking or doing a launch might kill us. And mm. I mean, the reality is obviously it's not going to kill us. So we need to kind of kindly let our inner critic know, thanks. Thanks for warning me. I'm actually not going to die. So I'm going to do it anyway. And then mo and doing it kind of despite what the inner critic says, we need to, we need to make ourselves vulnerable and, and be open to that emotional risk to be able to, grow and, and change, which is what we all want in our business. Yeah, absolutely. And I think maybe sometimes people think that they haven't made it or done it or been successful until they don't have any fears or worries or anxieties. And, and so they're, they're, yeah, they're trying to find something that is just not going to happen. Yeah. There's no magic bullet, unfortunately. Um, and you know, the thing, the thing about the inner critic is that it's it's not just sort of a bit um, kind of unpleasant. Everything is really black and white for our inner critic. So it will never say something like, oh, you shouldn't go live. That cardigan's not great. It will say something like, oh, you shouldn't go live. Look at that giant spot on your face. And oh, my God, no one's even going to watch you. You haven't got anything worth saying at all. Don't even know how rubbish you are. Like it will go at it hammer and tongs and be really mean. And then just when you've got 
um, say, because we're doing a live, so let's use this as an example. Just when you've got Facebook Lives down and you think, oh, I'm doing pretty well now, like I'm pleased with myself. This time last year, I was too afraid to do Facebook Lives. Bang, out comes your inner critic. Oh, don't you think you're being a bit cocky now? No, you're on Facebook all the time. Like you must, you're coming across being a bit arrogant, love. Maybe you should just reel it in a bit. So just when you think you've got it pasted, as it comes with something completely different. I mean, it's yes. kind of funny when you think about it. Yeah, but it, it does because there's all just there's just new level, new devil, next variant push through. Like I've helped so many people to get the confidence to do even just video, not live video, but just video. And yes. then they do it and they love it and they get going with it. And, and then I get a message and they're like, well, I've been doing it, but I, I think people might be sick of me now. And I'm like, no, they're not sick of you. They only saw yeah. like about 6% of your staff. So they're not sick of you. But that's that next thing. Definitely, definitely. And, and so the first, the first key thing is to be really aware of, of when it's your inner critic thinking and, and talking to you and what's real and what's not real. Um, so once you get that awareness and once you can identify your like your your a your triggers and be what your favorite go to procrastination is so like yours is education it might be um scrolling facebook it might be getting up to make multiple cups of tea caroline you've frozen i don't know if you can still hear me <laughs> <laughs> yes i can oh you can okay your face isn't moving <laughs> um so once we've identified like our favorite procrastination triggers then we can start to be aware of those, get curious about what it is that we're trying to avoid, and then we can start to move past it. Yeah, so that awareness is really key. Oh, we've lost her again. Not playing ball today. Well, I, I have to say, whilst we're trying to get um, George back on, that, yeah, I am learning a, a lot. And definitely uh, agree that that awareness. Hello! I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Me either. Me either. But Do you I'm think, is it because I'm, I'm using my phone because it has a better camera? Do you think if I use my laptop, it will not keep tracking me off? Do you think there's a difference? No. Hmm. Not, not, I can't find a difference. I can't find a rhyme or a reason to why it works and doesn't work. Anyway, well, maybe we should take our hint from Facebook and kind of roll up the conversation. Um, now you've frozen, so it'll be interesting to see if you disappear again or whether you reappear. What I was going to say was that I would love for you to share with everyone where they can find you, connect with you, learn more about what you do. Um, as you said, mentioned, and I both I mentioned as well, you're running an amazing visibility challenge. all of the kind of places that we can find you but you have disappeared again so I will give everyone a little bit of information about where they might be able to find you so if you guys head to uh, Georgina Bowden coaching that is where you uh, Georgina Bowden success catalyst I love those words uh, you will be able to find out uh, a little bit more about what George does. She also has an amazing Facebook group, uh, which is called Entrepreneurial Hearts. And I can pop a link in the post because um, unfortunately I don't seem to be able to let her back in so that she can finish and say goodbye. I will try as we're going through this, but um, a wonderful Facebook group over there. That is where the visibility challenge is running this week. So if you are looking for some help with the procrastination, with the taking action, with the moving through fear, all of those kinds of things, then make sure that you do connect with George. George, I have no idea why it keeps dumping you off either. Um, and now it's dumped you off completely and it won't even allow me to add you in unless you have the option to add yourself in. Crazy, crazy, crazy. I really hope though that you guys got something out of this interview despite the tech difficulties. Um, I really hope that it's kind of given people some, just a bit of food for thought about what procrastination is, about recognizing when you're in it and then what you can do to move through it. The whole idea of just taking small action steps, of knowing 
when you're getting stuck and why you're getting stuck and how you can sort of move forward from there. I will pop into this post all the links for you to find George. Thank you for persisting through our technical difficulties. Uh, thank you so much to George for taking the time to be with us. And I will uh, talk to you guys again soon for our next live interview. Thanks. Bye.